Guys, welcome to What's Barking Local. It's great to be with you on a gorgeous Wednesday afternoon. Thank you kindly for joining us on What's Barking Local. As you just heard, the water cooler of Animal Community in Charlottesville in Central Virginia. <laughs> um, that voice that you hear on camera, and why don't we go to the two-shot Harris Tolbert, is the star of our program. Her name is Patty Bowden. She's the businesswoman and the entrepreneur behind Animal Connection. For 17 plus years, Animal Connection has been Central Virginia's leader in the all natural pet store space, dog food, treats, grooming, self-serve dog wash. It's literally an epicenter of um, just improving the quality of life of your animal. And she has done it through some very hard work in 17 years of her, 17 plus years of her life. That's right. Um, you are helping support and lead the charge and spotlight um, something that is near and dear to your heart, Patty Bowden, and mm. that's a Great Dane with Green Dogs Unleashed. Oh, yeah. Well, we saw we got a post this morning from our good friends Erica Proctor and Green Dogs Unleashed, and, man, she just does so much for animals. She rescues, she trains, she does classes. I mean, she is out there making a difference in the, in the pet world for sure. And, you know, and just recently she's helped rescue and place I think maybe three huge litters of puppies. I mean, she has been busy, and not to mention she also has three kids. So she's she's doing a lot. Well, they found out about this Great Dane that needed to be rescued, and she loves Great Danes. She loves big dogs, and so uh, one of her um, volunteers went to go get this dog, and when he came back, you know, they were kind of looking her over and getting to know her. I think her name's Della, um, and they noticed, you know, you know, she's a little bit swollen underneath and they checked her out and took her to the vet sure enough she's getting ready to have eight to ten puppies get out yeah so they really need some pet food uh they need to boost this you know mom's immune system and and pet food is uh puppy food is a really good way to do that because it's high in fat and lots of calories so we need to help the mom we need to help these ten puppies when they come in they need things like uh oh piddle pads and uh supplies you know all kinds of supplies i have a complete list and golly moses we might need to even send erica a bottle of wine seriously <laughs> all these things she, bottle she of might, bourbon yeah she might need help too so <laughs> but you know this is what she does and you know we've already started a big collection of dog food at Ant over at animal connection and so if you know if you want to help that's great you know call us we'll let you know what they need you know, you can buy it through our store. You can make a donation in kind, and we'll get it to Erica at Green Dogs. And it'd just be a really cool way to help someone that's really, you know, man, she is making doing, an impact. She is doing her bit and then some. So, you know, let's give her some love. Let's give some love to Green Dogs Unleashed in totality. Yes, I mean, a fabulous absolutely. organization. Special yes. needs dogs, Green Dogs mm -hmm. Unleashed helps. Um, you know, uh, home and support mm -hmm. and uh, give a second shot at life or a longer shot at life to special needs dogs. This is truly an amazing organization. Right. And he, uh, I mean, she she's helped dogs that are deaf. I mean, a lot of people just give up a deaf dog and didn't think it, they could do anything. You know, she can work with them. She can work and, you know, show them eye hand signals. And, you know, Erica just never gives up. So we're not going to give up on her either. I love it. I love it. Caitlin yeah. Mancini, mm -hmm. welcome to the program. Thank you kindly for joining us. She's a big time uh, animal and dog owner, Cindy Schornberg of uh, Keswick Vineyards, one of the owners. Thank you kindly for joining us on What's Barking Local. Mm -hmm. I think we should take that first segment and turn it into our first sizzle reel, which we then can promote <laughs> on the Animal Connection page and also send to Erica. Yep, we can. Um, mm -hmm. Michael McGlohan, yep. thank hey, you Mike. kindly for joining us on the program. <laughs> Why don't we, Harris Tolber, put the spotlight back on Patty on a one-shot, and Patty, you introduce our guest. Oh, great. I would love to. So this is our friend, Heather Travis. Heather helps, I like to say, she helps dogs with people problems. <laughs> I think that's a really good way to put it because a lot of the times it's, it's a communication issue and maybe the people don't understand or, you know, maybe they're having trouble with their own family members and so they really don't know how to, to relate to a dog, but they want to make it work with their family. You know, the, the list goes on. But anyway, Heather has a very good way of teaching dogs. She takes them in her home. Uh, she takes them out on the road. I mean, if you want a good family dog, Heather's the girl. I love it. So I love it. Welcome to the Welcome, show. Welcome, Heather. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> I'm excited. Good, good. Um, give us the snapshot, the who, what, when, where, why of uh, your business. 
So um, I started training dogs in Virginia about three years ago. Um, this is our third year in business, Lead the Way Canine Training. We do all private private training. So we go out and we do in-home training so that we can work closely with the owners and the families in their home environments to help the dog with the issues that they're having. We also offer um, what Patty was talking about, a board and train program where the dogs come and stay with me for several weeks. Um, sometimes this is because the dog have issues that need a little bit more professional help. Sometimes it's just a case of they need to be boarded anyway. The, you know, the owners are going to be on vacation. Why not kill two birds with one stone? Um, and the dogs go home really well trained and then they get um, some follow-up lessons. So um, those are the services we offer, um, and it's been great. I love it. Erica Renee is watching now. <laughs> Want to give her a hello? Hey, Erica. I hope you heard what we said earlier. Uh, thank you for joining us <laughs> on ready. What's Barking Local. Lead the way canine training. Yep. Mm -hmm. Evolution of the business. Mm -hmm. Training here in Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. um, give us the birth story. Oh, gosh, that's a long story. Uh, I've always loved animals. I mean, since I was little, I was the annoying kid that was like, when can we get another cat, dog, turtle, fish, <laughs> pony, whatever it was. Um, and my parents were generally pretty pretty happy to oblige, thank, you know. God bless them. But um, um, I knew I wanted to work with animals. Event originally thought I was going to be a veterinarian, veterinarian, went to school for that. And then it kind of evolved to, ah, I don't know that I want to work in the medical field so much. I spent a lot of time working for vets, animal rescue, shelters, that kind of stuff, um, horses. Um, and then when I got my own dog, um, as my first adult dog, um, or first dog as an adult about 10 years ago, she needed some training. Mm -hmm. um, she was super sweet, but she had no manner. She didn't know how to do anything. I remember she was even couldn't even do the stairs she just had never seen a set of stairs before um, and so I started doing a lot of training classes and you know uh, researching and learning all I could about dog training getting more involved classes seminars that kind of stuff and it just kind of snowballed from there and just started getting more involved um, I had uh, one of the classes that I attended with my own dog um, the trainer was like you're pretty good at this you know have you ever thought about <laughs> maybe you should you know try doing this and so I started working with her a little bit kind of apprenticing um, and then from there got more interested and started actually working for training businesses and then when I moved you down to for some pretty impressive people yeah no I mean I've been really fortunate there's I mean especially now with the advent of social media and everything and uh, there's so many opportunities to to learn from all these you know really experienced and um, wonderful trainers out there um, and so I've been really lucky to be able to go to some great seminars and workshops um, all over the country. Um, Give us some examples. How has the skill set evolved? Who have you learned um, from? I mean, big names. I mean, I don't know that you'd know them. Um, but uh, Chad Mackin, I'm a big fan of him. Um, he's up in Chicago. Um, uh, let's see, Robin McFarlane. I've been to a couple of her seminars. She's been training dogs for like 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, she's great. She, I really like the way that um, the way that she ha is with the dogs. You know, she has a really nice way about her. Um, let's see, uh, Tyler Mudo. He's up in uh, New, New York. I'm a big fan of him. Um, he's also the president of the IACP, which is the professional organization I'm a, um, a member of, the International Association of Canine Professionals. It's not just dog trainers. There's groomers, mm -hmm. um, dog walkers, basically professional dog people. Mm -hmm. um, so he's he's a great trainer if you're looking to learn more about dog training. Um, so I've learned a lot from him. I've been able to work with him in person. Um, and I mean, there's just a whole bunch. Um, and hoping to go to a big seminar that the IACP has um, this fall. It's going to be in Colorado, so trying to schedule Ooh. that. And that's basically like the mecca of everybody, you know, from everywhere goes. And it's like four days of just people talking about dogs and training. And I'm really excited about that. So that, that sounds should be like good. a good four days to me. It's yeah. kind of like your it's your your expo you went to, except for oh, dog yeah. training. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. That's a sizzle reel. My first question to her all the way through that answer, and we'll send you the highlight reels. Great. That was a great uh, answer right there. Let me throw this in. Welcome Cameron Wells Marsh to the program. Thank you, Rob Barker, for joining us. Tim Ryan's joining us in Crozet. We have Chris Turner watching the program in Charlottesville. Shaki Burton, Everett Anderson of Pepsi Cola Bottling in Central Virginia. City right. Council candidate Bellamy Brown, Jonathan Galasso, Bill Granford, John Gilmer. A lot of people watching right now. Um, give it a like, give it a share on any channel that you're watching. How about how, you know, put in perspective how the business has evolved. I, I love asking this question to entrepreneurs because years one to early time. Yeah. I mean, it's like for me, like we're 11 years on May 31st. And I oh, remember wow. the first time, first year, I was like, 
dude, I'm just trying to go like figure <laughs> like one step forward. Yeah. Like three steps backwards. And I, I mean, like, it's still evolving. I mean, we're still making changes. You know, we're still, I'm always trying to figure out what's the best way that I can help these clients with their dogs. You know, is it a different type of program? Is it, you know, a different technique? Is it, you know, a different type of support or resource? You know, videos, you know, uh, notes, that kind of stuff. So I'm always trying to improve and and innovate you know what I can to do the best out there and there's always you know uh, other trainers coming up with new ideas you know not really reinventing the wheel but just different ways to do things so I'm always learning and trying to change and evolve and, and not just get stuck with doing it one way but that's that's the cool thing about what you do because you are flexible and yeah you have to be dogs, every dog has a different yeah. behavior I mean yes they're pack animals so they also have right. little nuances and definitely people do so finding the right fit of how you can right. help that particular person with that particular dog yeah. has got to be really challenging for you and especially in Charlottesville which is I love it I'm, fr I'm from Massachusetts and was training in Boston where it was pretty typical like everyone that lives in Boston has kind of like the same you know they work too much the dogs all live in doggy day daycare kind of stuff they have the same <laughs> issues are they smaller dogs no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> There's still Not lots of big dogs, okay. too. Um, but in Charlottesville, you know, one day I could be on a horse farm with, you know, a family that that's, you know, that's their normal backyard is they have 200 acres and they're having certain issues with their dog because it's either, you know, chasing the, the horses or, you know, it's not recalling when they're calling it. And then I can work with, you know, a grad student from UVA and, you know, one of the apartments that are having issues because he lives in an apartment and the dog's barking. So, I mean, it's never the same thing every day, which is really, you know, I just love my job because it's, it's something new every day. You know, I don't get bored. It's a do lot of you, variety. Do you adapt to the dog or do you go in with the same training mindset for any animal? I have kind of like a uh, a curriculum, okay. you know, of like skills. Like a that, foundation? Yeah, yeah. So there's like certain skills that I think most dogs um, can benefit from, and those are the skills that the owners generally want from their dogs. What are the top five things that dogs need to know? Good question. That's Back a good that question. Yeah. Hey, that was good. I, I studied. That was good. <laughs> so mine, and there, my, my top five would be heel, which is walk without pulling on a leash. Yes. Um, sitting down with an implied stay, meaning they sit until you tell them that they're done until you release them. So yeah. it's not just I sit for a cookie and then I got up and wander away in two seconds. Um, a come command, so off leash, being able to call your dog in any situation, whether they're playing with a dog or they're chasing a deer um, or they're barking at a neighbor, getting that dog to be able to come to you right away um, is super important too. Um, and I really like to teach uh, place command, which is like go hang out on your bed um, and stay there until we tell you you're done, which can be super useful for when you have guests coming to the door or even if you're just answering the door because the pizza guy's there. You don't have dogs trying to rush out the door or jump on your guests. Um, or if you have little kids in the house, you have a new baby in the house, it's a great, um, a great skill for the dog so that you can have the baby out and you don't have to worry about your 90-pound you know, dog barreling over the newborn you know, as they're learning how to crawl later on. Um, so those are really it. Heel, sit, down, come, and place are kind of the big ones. The walk mm -hmm. on a leash without pulling, oh my gosh. Mm. It is so like underappreciated oh, yeah. until you have a dog. like It's a 120-pound German Shepherd like mine that pulls, mm -hmm. and then you're like, I think this dog is going to rip my shoulder out of its socket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that the most challenging of the five? Well, I guess maybe come off the leash is pretty brutal, too. You know, I, yeah, I think, honestly, a lot of people, I'd say the majority of dog owners struggle with leash walking. Um, and when you're out and about, you don't see a whole lot of good leash walking. Right. You know, you may no. see dogs. What's good leash washing? Walking. What I like oh. to see is that the dog and I are walking together. And it's not that the dog is dragging you and completely, you know, unaware that there's something at the end of the leash, except that it keeps them from running into traffic, you know. And that's what we see is, you know, the dogs are walking and the owners are just kind of hanging on for dear life, trying to steer them out of traffic. We and see that so much at Animal Connection because someone will say, can you give me something that will teach my dog yeah. to walk? I said, well, how about if I teach you how to, yeah. to, uh, how to teach your dog to walk? No, 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 no. Yeah. I want a harness or I want a, a thing that goes there's, over the I mean, nose there's certainly that different. Puts his head in a different position. There's, and I can't stand it. Oh. There's certainly different tools that can aid your efforts, but there's yeah. no magic product what that's you gonna, yeah, what you, you know, all of a sudden your you. dog walks like an angel. You know, it, it takes time and technique and consistency. And that's the thing is whatever you do, you have to be consistent. Well, what, if you do, what do you do if, if you don't have those things with you? Right. right. So right. that the dog doesn't know. I mean, right. or like these, these retractable leads. I oh. won't allow them in my store. I, I refuse them. to sell them. They're dangerous. So many, they're very dangerous. They'll burn people. 
They will, and if the dog mm -hmm. gets loose, the, then you've got this thing flopping yep. around them, and you can't possibly, if a dog is extended way out there, you Control. can't possibly get him to come to you. Right. No. Or, yeah. or right. this has happened to me, and I've learned this the hard way, where it's like I'll have a family member and come a long way in 17 years of dog ownership here, <laughs> especially German Shepherds. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll have my, uh, you know, early on, my mom, who's mm -hmm. like 100 pounds and 5'3", mm -hmm. walking my 100-pound son yeah. German Shepherd, and she's inexperienced with the retract retractable leash. And she's letting the dog get 20 feet of sprint. Yeah, right momentum. Before, right, of momentum. <laughs> and I'm like, Mom, you're going to die here. Yeah. Or the dog is going to get away from It's a from funny you. YouTube video, but it's not funny when it happens to you. Right, yeah. because no. something's going to happen to the dog or you. Yeah. No. What is the most challenging aspect of your business, the human or the dog? Is it the well, human? That's the human. question. Yeah, the right. humans. Right, uh, why? Just because humans as a species, we're a little bit impatient. We tend to want things to happen right For away. Ourselves. We nag our dogs. You yeah. know, we repeat sit, 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 um, mm -hmm. because you can't, you don't want to wait to have it happen. Um, and it's, it's. You're, you're, I, tell, I tell people you're building a skill set for the dogs, but it's a skill set for the people too. And if it goes against your old skill set, you're changing habits. Mm -hmm. And we all know that creating a new habit is really tough. You know, how many people sign up on January 1st to get a new gym membership and how many of those people are still going to Good the analogy. gym by February mm -hmm. 1st? You know, not a whole lot. So it, it takes some time and some daily practice to get into those habits and to get that consistency. And that's really what dog training is, is consistency. It's huge. I mean, and consistency, it's, it's like that with dogs. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, kids. cats don't really give, yep. give relationships. Give a hoot, but it's like that <laughs> with horses. Yep. It's like that with kids. Yeah. Uh, you know, and other people that you need to either include in your boundary or, or not in your boundary. But, you know, I've said to people several times, you know, I promise you that when you react this way, I will be consistent and do this every mm -hmm. single time. I will reward you when you do it correctly mm -hmm. every single time. But if you choose to do something differently, I will. You know, I'm going to let I, you I'm, know. Yeah, I'm going to let you know, yep. and it's not appropriate every single time. And they think, yeah, right. You have to be so mm -hmm. con consistent with everything. dogs are drawn to people that are predictable, <laughs> that are consistent. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's something that. Um, I see that with my dogs come feeding time. I swear yeah. to God, at like 5.30 or 6 o'clock, <laughs> they're like looking at the bowl, looking at You think at they me, can looking, tell time, right? Right, right. Yeah. and it's not that they can tell time. It's just like, is it a habit? It's is probably it just, a pattern. It's a pattern? You right? know, um, like you're, you do something around that time, probably that signals that it's about time. You know, maybe it's you take your shoes off and change into comfy clothes because you're done the day at work, and now they're like, oh, it's close to food time. And they totally, mm -hmm. like, this is crazy. So, like, uh, when I go on a hike with my dogs... I'll wear like the same ratty pair of jeans yeah. or like the same uh, hiking shoes that I don't mm -hmm. care if they get messed up. Yeah. When I put on that ratty pair of jeans, they get or those excited. Hikes, they know <laughs> it's hike time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. Dogs, dogs are associative learners. They learn by association. So when you pair a behavior with something specific, they associate them. So those ratty jeans have now been associated with hike time fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. How about how many, um, how many training seminars or sessions um, does it take before you start noticing ROI, return on investment, results? Um, generally, you should see some improvement within the first week after a lesson. Um, you know, I tell people it's progress, not perfection. Uh -huh. You know, you're generally not going to see like overnight, oh my God, it's like crazy different, but you should see improvement. You should see some progress. Um, and the more consistent and the more that you work at it, it should just build on that success. Dog training, unfortunately, is not linear. <laughs> right. So you'll have some ups and downs, um, mm -hmm. mostly because people are real inconsistent. So the more consistent you are, the more forward progress you'll make. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I tell people that we can accomplish, for most dogs, off-leash control, meaning I feel comfortable letting them off-leash in an unfenced area, and I can call them away from whatever it is. They're healing nicely. They're going to their place in about six sessions. Nice. Do you, do you, I want to ask a question because um, we do this in the horse world too. Do you find that dogs, like if you ask a dog to sit, mm -hmm. do you find that when someone goes sit or do you find sit? Good question. You know, do, do you find that they react differently to your voice, voice inflection? Tone? Yeah, I mean, you don't need to be like, not intimidating sit, sit. No. you know you don't need to be like a meanie but it, you need to it, it's decisive. more about being say it with confidence right so if word. you're are right. you asking sit like please maybe yeah. that'll happen if i give you a cookie <laughs> and i smile really you know it's like yeah. or just sit just ask the same way that i'd be like take a seat say it with confidence I'm sitting 
right? <laughs> like, just say it with confidence. You don't need to, you know, scream at them, but you also don't, shouldn't be begging your dog to do, like, mm-hmm. the basic stuff. You know, I tell people it's not, you know, advanced obedient uh, obedience. It's not, you know, these complicated uh, trick competition kind of stuff. It's basic manners and obedience. He'll mm-hmm. sit down, come place. All dogs should be able to do that. You shouldn't have to beg your dog to do that. How stuff. about the feeling of energy from the human and how the dog responds? Definitely. A good, you know, a good example is... Um, you know, a friend, uh, when I'm out of town and walking the dog, friend doesn't have as much experience as I, I do with the German mm-hmm. Shepherd, especially a 120-pound yeah. animal, and is walking with trepidation mm-hmm. around the neighborhood. Yep. Mm-hmm. And my friend says, Jerry, Leo's not great mm-hmm. on the leash. I'm like, well, when you're walking Leo, are you scared that he's going to do something wrong? Mm-hmm. He goes, of course I am. He's 120 yeah. pounds. I'm like, Leo is sensing that fear. <laughs> yeah, and any anxiety or any tension, you know, if they tense up on the leash when you're passing another dog because they're like, oh, maybe he's going to pull towards the other dog, you're, you're feeding that anxiety right down the leash. Your dog's going to going to take that and react accordingly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how do yeah. you counter that? How do you get people to chill? I mean, it's hard. It's hard. Prescribing them Zoloft. Because you can't just go, (laughs) just be calm. Don't get upset. You know, especially with people that have dogs that have had behavior Mm -hmm. issues or they have a history of every time we walk by a dog, my dog lunges and barks at a dog. Right. I mean, it's, 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 it's understandable that they're anxious when they get near a dog. Um, so it takes time. I mean, you need to, uh, whatever you could do. I've told people like hum a little song, you know, if you have a little mantra, a mantra you can say, like, you know, just breathe. Um, Keep your arms loose, you know, if you tend to, like, choke up on the leash, you know, you, you really want to kind of um, make sure that there's no tension on the leash because that's going to really feed into any type of reactivity or, or negative um, reaction from the dog. Um, but, yeah, it takes time. It, again, it, they, they have to get a little bit more confident in themselves. You know, the more that they do it, generally, the more confident they are. The more that they work with the dog, they build that relationship. But, it's yeah, it, it, that's tough. It's really tough. Right. An animal communicator friend of mine says that when you tense up on the leash – you're basically creating a pack and you're telling the dog, all right, you're out there and I'm back here and you're going. And so you are now in charge of this pack. Yeah. Is, is there any truth to that? Or? Well, I mean, yeah, we want, like I said, we, when we're walking with our dogs, we want it to be something we're doing together and not just they're doing their thing and I'm hanging on for your life. Right. So he's going to, uh, your energy is going to affect him, especially if it's like their person, right? So like mm-hmm. Jerry's mm-hmm. dog is going to respond to his energy probably differently than he would respond to my energy, right? Because, like, he's going to be much more sensitive because you're his person, right? You're his Mm guy. Um, Yeah, the the energy is really important. Mm -hmm. And like I said, like, calm confidence is what I try to tell people is, like... that's good. Calm confidence. You don't need to be all, like, tough and bravado, but you need to, like, be confident. And the dog will then go, oh, you know what you're doing? I can follow your lead. Because if you're looking, you know, tentative or you're looking anxious, the dog is like, you don't know what's going to happen or you're not going to be able to protect me if something happens, so I'll take the lead. And then you get dogs that are like, ah, eh, that guy looks funny, I'm going to bark at him. And right. they, start to, they start to decide to do those things instead of That's letting really you handle good. it. Is there a more challenging, what is the most challenging dog breed to train? Do you I get, get that question, question a lot. lot. I yeah. Um, I don't think it's specifically a breed. I think it's a personality. Um, although there are, there, alpha. there are some dogs that like... <laughs> The bulldog, not known for being like, you Smart. know, in the obedience champion of the world, right? Why is that? Um, Intelligence? Just because that's how they weren't bred that. That's not their, their purpose, right? So dogs that were bred to work closely with people, so like labs and goldens, they go out in the field and they work closely together. Border collies, they're working with that shepherd, right? They're very intelligent and they're used to working closely, mm-hmm. having a relationship with a human. So they tend to be more easily trainable because they've been bred to take direction from people versus like a, a terrier, you know, rat terrier, Jack Russell, they kind of do their thing. They go out and they hunt and they get the rats out of the barn. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's nobody following them around. They just kind of let them do their thing. And then at the end of the day, they come back and the far- farmer feeds them. So they're not working closely, you know, so dogs that are more independent, the hounds sometimes can be a little bit more challenging um, just because that that's their nature. They're bred to be independent thinkers. They're not, you know, the goofy lab that's like, okay, that sounds good. I'll do that. <laughs> you know, the, the hound is like, nah, let me try mine first. I think my, you know, I have a good idea. Um, dogs that aren't motivated by anything. So dogs that aren't real food motivated, they aren't real toy motivated, and they don't really care too much about people. You know, they're more like cats. <laughs> How does that happen? Um, it's just some dogs are that way. It could be a dog that's, wow. you know, really fearful um, and really anxious and so those things that normally he might enjoy, he's too nervous to want to take those things. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a nervous dog, you go out around people, and all of a sudden 
they stop taking food. Um, so the, that type of um, dog is, is a little bit more difficult. So our German mm. Shepherds have two German Shepherds, Leo and Max, mm -hmm. brothers from different litters. Okay. Um, Leo. Good. Don't get litter mates. On, yeah, yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> Please don't get litter mates. I've heard that. And, and I also don't recommend uh, two males either that are strong German Shepherd yeah. personalities because that was two tough. females sometimes is even worse though. Is it? Yeah. Oh boy. How about no, a male female better? Usually <laughs> alternate sexes is better. <laughs> right. Um, it, it these depends, dudes though. when they rumble and they don't rumble as much they used to fight all the time yeah. especially with Leo's food aggressive. Mm -hmm. The fights Heather with two 100 plus pound dogs. I mean you just have two big strong It is horror. It's dogs. frightening. Yeah. Like for, you've seen that I'm sure. Yeah. The dog. Yeah. So where I'm going with this is like the, the German Shepherd, the strong, mm -hmm. alpha, confident, mm -hmm. like tough to not break, mm -hmm. but like mold. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But once we were able to mold mm -hmm. and crack the exterior, mm -hmm. and it took a hell of a lot of draw, dog training. I'm talking like a year of dog training. Yeah. Now is like... Shepherds aren't easy. Incredibly willing to please. Yeah. And so eager to like um, serve. Yeah. Yeah, once you kind of get them on your team and you kind of convince them that, like, stick with me and, like, good stuff will happen, they're generally pretty easy For life. To like jump a ride or die. Yeah. Um, uh, but sometimes getting them on board initially brutal. can take some effort right. and, you know, some blood, sweat, and tears sometimes. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, usually once you convince them that, like, hey, when you do the things I ask you to do, like, I am the keeper of all this greatness in the world and I will share it with you, <laughs> you know, and that's the way to get the stuff that you want is to kind of work for me a little bit. So nice. um, We have a question from one of the viewers. Great. Colleen Wise Owens. Mm -hmm. Colleen Wise Owens says, um, Heather, can you discuss leash reactivity issues? So leash reactivity is kind of a general term for dogs that act like knuckleheads when they're on leashes, yeah. and they may not they may not act the same way when they're off leash. So a dog could be very dog social and very friendly um, when they're off leash playing with dogs, um, but when you put them on leash, they bark, lunge, pull. They could even look really really aggressive, um, and that's something. It can happen for a couple of reasons. Um, one of the biggest reasons I see is that, like I said, you're creating tension on the leash. Um, sometimes you can almost cause reactivity if, you know, you, totally. you, you're nervous around, you know, you're walking down the street with your little dog and then Jerry with his two big shepherds comes yeah. down <laughs> and you tense up and pull your dog a little bit closer to you. And now your dog goes, huh, mom got real nervous when those dogs came by. Maybe those dogs are bad news. Next time I'm going to bark at them. And it kind of can snowball from there. Um, a lot of times it, it comes from frustration. So it's really friendly dogs that were you know, have always been really friendly, um, and they start to get frustrated as they get older because they're used to being able to play with every dog they meet, and now you're telling them, hey, we have to do our walk, we can't go and say hi to that dog, and that frustration starts turning into aggression. Um, it's generally an issue of arousal, so um, aggression is a type of arousal, but not all arousal is aggression, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. arousal is just like excitement, crazy, silly stuff, um, but a lot of times that frustration on the leash can turn into looking rather aggressive. It doesn't mean, and most dogs that have leash reactivity are not truly aggressive dogs. They're dogs that are either frustrated, um, you know, uh, they are insecure, maybe they're nervous around other dogs. They had a dog run up and attack them on leash mm -hmm. once, right. especially early on, those early um, experiences. Can Formidable. Yeah, yeah, definitely, as a puppy, that kind of stuff. And that's why I tell my clients, you got to be real picky about which dogs you let your puppies meet, because it only takes one bad experience for them to go, yeah, dogs are bad news. We have a question coming in from Michael mm -hmm. Jameson in Charlottesville, and it's on that topic my neighbor has a dog that is very protective of his yard and mm -hmm. does not seem to be on an invisible fence oh how do oh, we wow. handle this and we have two young children i mean that's a potential well, trouble waiting to happen if there. there's no secure like you know fence or something that's something i would probably get involved you know talk to the neighbor if the neighbor is not at all willing to do something about it then that's an animal control issue yeah um yeah, because all it takes is that dog to run after you, your kids. I mean, right, cause especially dogs, when kids are involved, like there's no fooling around. Right. A, a kid can chase after a ball and be territorial. Right, the dog can right. be territorial. Yeah. I mean, it, you can. he may be on an invisible fence, and sometimes that creates that type of frustration and, and protective instinct is because the dogs, they run the fence line, you know, whether it's a real fence or mm -hmm. an invisible fence. And what happens is somebody walks up to the property, they start barking, and the people keep on going on their way. And now the dog goes... I barked and made that person go away. So they get reinforced oh, wow. for their behavior. And so in their mind, they're like, the barking is what made that weird person go away or that other dog go away. When really you were just walking by and you would have done it the same way if they were there or not. So what should a person do? 
I mean, you can't train your, your neighbor's dog. Right. That's yeah, something. But if you're walking by someone and the dog's oh. following you and barking, do you stop and acknowledge that dog? Or It's what, tough. What I mean, do? I've had several clients where they've had this these type of things happen and they're now struggling with real serious leash reactivity. And the best thing you can do is, is carry something. An umbrella is a really good one. You can pop it out and it might just startle the dog. Or at least it gives you a little bit of space if the dog is like charging at you. Mm-hmm. You know, walking sticks. So you can kind of have an extension of your arm. Um, I tell people, do whatever you need to do to protect your dog that you have on leash and your kids too, if you have kids, especially if it's an off leash dog that's not under control. Yeah. Right. Like you, you're not, don't, don't let that dog attack your dog. Right. Um, I see that at Walnut Creek all the time. Yeah. Walnut Creek Park when we're hiking and they're just wow. hiking, you know, hiking with their dog off leash and I'm not hating. Mm-hmm. Okay. My dogs are always on leash. Yeah. They're German shepherds. Yeah. If the dog comes and approaches us, our German shepherds are going to respond yeah, especially if they're on leash. They're, they're, on re- leash. they're restricted. Yeah. They can't do anything if that dog comes up and starts acting like a jerk. Right. So they, t- you know, that's... They have a tendency I, I, to be aggressive because of it. Yeah, they're feeling and a it's little bit threatened. They're threatened. Right. They can't do anything about it. They're stuck on this leash. If that dog comes up and attacks, there's nothing they can do. So I really try... That's something that's a huge pet peeve of mine is people that have dogs off leash. That that don't have control or they think it's okay because their dog is friendly to allow it to run up to other dogs. I immediately try you to communicate know. to the dog I mean, owner, get your dog on leash. Yeah, I, I tend to go, call your dog as loud as I can. Right, unless yeah. until you're invited to bring your dog over. Right. right, I mean, like I said, just because your dog is out in public doesn't mean it's a dog that wants to meet other, other dogs. And it, it shouldn't be you can only bring your dog out if they want to be the life of the party. You know, if they're being, respo- <laughs> being responsible and being you know, having the dog on leash and under control, letting your friendly dog run up and kind of accost that poor dog. Um, not only is it actually not friendly, that's quite rude for a dog to run up to a dog it doesn't know and shove its face in another dog's right. face. That's not actually like, the polite way to say hi. What if a human did that to another human? Right. I mean, the other human would probably knock that human out. Yeah, right, right. Like Get someone ran up to you space. in a bar and like right. tried to give you a hug before even like and saying you didn't hi know and the shaking person? their hand. Yeah. I but mean, it happens all the time. All the time in dogs. We tend to think it's it's okay. My dog's friendly is the thing you'll... It's okay, he's friendly. And I tell people that's irrelevant. My dog could be recovering from an injury. They could be sick. They could be working mm-hmm. through some aggression Or issues. your dog could be not friendly. Right. I mean, I could be trying to get my dog reacclimated to being around more dogs, and now your dog running up rudely and kind of accosting my dog has now set back our training, you know, six months. Well, um, dogs don't even do that with each other. If you know them in, in the dog park, I mean, they may come up and greet the new guy coming into an yeah. awfully I mean, dog really, park. you want the but dogs to right. do some, like, mutual sniffing butts, right. you know, as a polite way to say hi, instead of, like, right in each other's face, especially right. if one of the dogs is on leash. That's almost always a recipe for disaster, because exactly. that dog is going to feel restricted and more threatened. Jeremy Stanwick in Crozet says, should I read my dog's body language? Can you talk to me about the scruff that comes up on my dog's neck? His yeah. or his ears going down, up, sideways mm-hmm. when he's in different situations. Talk to us about body language. Yeah, good body question. language is super important. Um, dogs are really good communicators, um, but unfortunately, we're a little bit oblivious as sure. most humans. Right. Um, and we're waiting until there's really loud, overt communication, the growling, the barking, the lunging. And there's generally like five or ten steps before that stuff happens where they're trying to communicate. So what he's talking about, the scruff coming up, that's the hackles, you know, where the hair stands up on their midline. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, sometimes that's... a uh, um, a sign that they're overstimulated. It can happen like during play, really stimulating play. It can happen dogs that are aggressive, that will happen. Um, it can happen when dogs are just a little bit anxious. So it's not always, it's not the end all be all of communication. People will go, oh, well, his hackles came up. It doesn't always mean what you think it means. The same thing where people go, oh, his tail's wagging. Well, their tails can wag for a lot of different reasons. Dogs that are aggressive will still wag their tail, um, but it's a different type of wag. Um, you want to look at the overall picture. Does your, log, does your dog look loose? you know, and their body language is fluid, or are they looking stiff, stiff and tense? You know, that's the stuff you want to look out for. Their ears too, you know, are their ears kind of relaxed and either off to the side or kind of drooping, or are they perked up, you know, like they're looking at something, they're focused, they're fixated. Um, The same thing, you know, are they staring? Do they have a hard stare? Are they kind of soft in their expressions? There's there's a lot of information you can, you can gather just from learning to read your dog. And, And each dog's a little bit different. They don't all do the same communication you know some dogs when they're nervous they may pick up a front paw you know so they're standing with one paw Mm -hmm, up and that mm -hmm. says I'm a little anxious I'm a little unsure but not all dogs do that so you kind of have to do a little bit of paying attention and reading and learning about your own dog to realize what are their tells that they're starting to feel uncomfortable and then when you see those do something about it so don't wait until it escalates to them having to bark and growl and lunge 
right? Right. They're essentially saying, right. hey, this is how I feel. Right. And right. if you ignore the quieter signs of communication, then they will get louder. And then that's where you get dogs that are now barking and snapping and biting people. Right. Because they weren't listened to before. And there's, there's that other thing, like when a dog is really in a f a fearful of something. And yeah, to me, I don't know if this is, you know, I'm reading too much into this or not, but I mean, for instance, if a dog comes in, he's never been groomed before and he's really, really scared and he's covering it. Everybody's saying, oh, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. But are they telling that dog it's okay for you to act this way, or can they should they be redirecting that behavior to yeah? So there's a difference. So they enjoy something that and make it okay. There's a difference between like acknowledging like hey you know I, I understand you're upset like you're fine like I'll tell dogs you're fine it's okay, but like I do it yeah. really matter of fact I don't do it with a lot of emotion in my voice and then like you said I used to work in grooming too and we'd have the people drop off and yeah. they spend five minutes it's okay Bobby it's okay and you, those dogs were always the most anxious but a yeah. lot of times once the owners left they were so much better right. yeah so just like children you can definitely oh kind of reinforce it's that type of thing. mindset especially if you're petting your dog and telling them it's okay it's okay while they're showing these like anxious or right. unwanted behaviors it's the same thing you do when they do it's something like giving you them a like. treat so if you're petting them, exactly. you're reinforcing what they're doing. So, you know, you, you get what you pet is what we say. So that's a good one. You get don't pet you get. unless you want that. How about, um, we've talked about this briefly, reading the tail. Mm -hmm. I was always told that like the alpha dog in the pack has the, tr the tail that's straight up, highest up. I don't know if that's urban myth. Not all dogs can have a straight tail like that. Like that's what I was wondering. Dogs. Talk to us about um, the tail. And how that is a direction of personality Again, or mood. It, it's something that depends on your dog. You know, if your dog's tail generally, you know, sticks straight up, then, I mean, it can only go so high. You know, so having it be sticking up isn't necessarily saying anything if that's how they naturally carry it. You know, like the, the Nordic breeds that have, you know, the pugs mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the spits Like a and chow, stuff chow, like chow straight yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but if you have, like, a shepherd who generally their tail is kind of, like, half-masked half -masked. Or, or, like, relaxed, uh, you know, towards the ground, then that tail standing higher up is a sign that something's going on you know so it, again it's it's a little bit a case-by-case -case basis you have to learn you know they send really good energy <laughs> yeah you yeah. know how is social media and technology and smartphones and computers how has that impacted your business technology is great for dog training for the most part i think sometimes we overdo it a little bit where we remove like the human aspect you know where it's are like, you doing skype training or video conference no training? i don't do that but i do um I do, like, we'll send videos back and forth. I'll have a client send me a video and say, like, look at this if I can't get out to see them or if it's between lessons. It can be really helpful because a lot of times they're describing something and I think I know what they're talking about, but being able to see it is, is so much easier. And then I can go, oh, that's So they'll take fine. a video on their iPhone send it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. I tell people, I go, if there's something, you know, the next time your dog does that thing you were concerned about, try to get a video. Or when you're doing your training session, take a video and send it to me and I'll give you some tips and I can kind of, you know, let you know what you're doing right and let you know what you could do different. The ones I like that you always have on your page is when you've got the dogs in your home, you know, for mm -hmm. extended yeah. training and they're all sitting there and yeah. you're, you know, just waiting. They're all yeah. in place and waiting and just being really good until you've, you know, directed them to do something different or yeah. the pictures that you have you know in the shopping center on walking on the street wherever we do a know. lot of yeah. teaching them how to be mm. calm because most yeah. dogs they don't have a problem getting excited it's the opposite they don't know how to like be calm when stuff happens other dogs people guests food time whatever it is so we do a lot of training teaching the dog to like be mentally calm so place command long downs even and then you just build up the stimulation that they can do it around you know they can do it in your living room, okay, now they can do it outside in your front lawn. Now they can do it, you know, at a quiet park. Now they can do it at the downtown mall. You just keep asking for a little bit more as they have success with it. People are so wired now. I mean, they're reactive and wired in business and at home and online and on TV. They're so reactive. I bet, no, not you. <laughs> no, not you. But I mean, I, I bet that's really tough to keep because you've got to teach a human how to relax and have a different yeah. kind of focus with these animals. And, you know, it, it would work great with their, their kids and family too, if they could just wind down, relax. Sometimes I focus, tell people, ha right? do one of your training sessions, like do one of your practice sessions and don't say anything. Just use your body language and use your leash. That's cool. And I bet you your dog will respond really well. And because well, They respond so well to the hand commands. Yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. people talk too much and yeah. the dogs, it's like Charlie Brown. Rah, rah, rah. They just kind of tune it out. Yeah. You know, so when you, when you say something, it should be meaningful. You know, not to say, I mean, I talk to my dogs, you know, I like have conversations with them, but when I want them to do something, <laughs> I'm not just like, 
and this is not like verbal diarrhea all the time. You know, it's just you, you, you keep it short and sweet. Say what you mean, mean and mean what you say. Yeah. Have you any right. advice or perspective you can share? And this is a tough question of maybe stopping a dog fight. I mean, pre no prevention, fun. prevention really right. is recognizing the early signs. You know, as soon as you see something that is, oh, they're a little anxious, they're a little uncomfortable, or that dog is a little bit, usually it's an energy thing. Like that dog is a little bit too exuberant. He's going to tick someone else off. I can offer some perspective on that yeah. and throw it back to you. So we've probably had, say, so Leo is seven in October and Max is six months younger. Um, so in almost seven years, say 40 to 50 fights. Oh, wow. And that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. But we haven't had any in years. That's good. And how we've taken that away is because of we feed them in different rooms. Yep. So like Leo and Max are fed completely separately. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's literally stopped. Yeah, so removing the things fights. that they may want to fight over right, resources. Preventative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean if they're gonna if if they find bones really high value and it's something that they would want to fight over, it's worth fighting, then feed them in crates or feed them on, on their beds in separate parts of the room. You know, don't don't just leave those things out so then when one walks by, the other one gets mad. How about how about the fight itself? If it gets to that point. There's no really good way to do it. You're, right. If you're breaking up a dog fight, there's a high likelihood that you're going to get hurt. Right. You're so, going to get bit. So just go into that, like if you're going to jump in I a dog I use a chair. Fight. Yeah, I mean, you could do that. It, 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 if there's another person, obviously it's easier. If it's just your, like you have one person, it's tough. Right. Um, I've heard some people say like they've, you know, sprayed the dogs with a hose. I think I had one client that said that that worked once or a bucket of water you got to have something. a hose there. Yeah, I mean, you you use what you have. You got to that because sometimes if a dog can jump and you know grab by the throat or grab by yeah. the back i mean you know so they, it's fast yeah when it happens. so fast you it's have terrifying to, you have to really be aware of your surroundings i mean yeah sometimes they can come out of nowhere but your dog knew yeah your dog knew that dog was over there right yeah. and if you watch like heather said if yeah. you watch their signals you'll see what they're reacting to if you see their ear looking that way mm -hmm. when you're walking this way their attention is not on you. Their attention is on what's over there. Yeah. So you'd have to be just so in tune with your dog. Yeah. The assimilation yeah. of, I got a couple more questions. You're crushing it. Brent Lillard, welcome <laughs> to the show. Lauren Thompson, welcome to the show. Roger Crawford, Amanda Triplowski, Billy Kernick, Ray Cadell. Um, like and share the program on any channel you guys are watching. How about assimilating your dog to high traffic, high noise, highly populated areas? For example, the downtown mall. I struggled with this with Leo, had more success with Max. Mm -hmm. uh, Max, when he was younger, I would bring him downtown. Mm -hmm. Leo did not do that as much, mm -hmm. um, and it's had an impact. Yeah. Throw that to you. I mean, the best thing you can do if you're planning to want to bring your dog to these places, you know, that's something that you're going to want to do. You want to do breweries. You're going to, you know, do outdoor seating, you know, at dinner time, that kind of stuff is if you have a young dog, start doing that early, early. on. Yeah. So it's part of socialization. It's exposing them to the stimulation. Now, if you have an older dog, maybe, you know, you just didn't do it when they were younger or you just rescued a dog. They're older. It's just slow and steady. Right. So you want to go to the downtown mall. I wouldn't go to the downtown mall as a step one. You know, I would go somewhere just, you know, slowly introducing to busier areas. You know, if your neighborhood's quiet, find a neighborhood that's a little bit more busy, you know, um, or, you know, drive to another neighborhood down the block or, you know, maybe uh, in Charlottesville. What I generally do is I start at like if, if the downtown mall is our end goal is, you know, we do lots of neighborhood walks. We do lots of like our foundation training. And then it's like, OK, let's go to like Stonefield. Because it's an outdoor mm -hmm. area, it's going to be busy. There's going to be people. You might have dogs. There's traffic, um, but it's not the downtown mall. Right. Right. And there's so, a green spot you could escape. If yep. You need there's to. some grab. There's some green area. So if the dogs need like a little decompression space. sniff, yeah, some chill time. Yeah, that's. I really like that area for that reason. Um, uh, Barracks Shopping Center is another place that it's kind of similar. There's going to be people, but there's like those spaces like the patio outside of Panera. You can kind of tuck in a corner and give the dog a little downtime. Um, and then when we, when we start going to the downtown mall, I don't go Fridays at 5. Right. I go Ooh, like week, weekday, midday, you good know, um, not dinner time. And then you just go when they have some success, you go at a time that might be a little bit busier, you know, or you get a little bit closer to the band that's playing or like, you know, whatever it is, the Christmas tree display mm -hmm. um, in, you know, around the holidays. Um, it's, it's just slowly 
um, building up, building up a little bit at a time without overwhelming them. There's there's a term called the threshold where you want to keep the dog under threshold. So whatever they get stressed about, um, at some point they're going to go over threshold. So you really want to try to keep them below that point because once they go over threshold, they're really not in a state to learn and absorb. They're just kind of like anxious and freaking out. Um, so that may be a distance. You know, the dog's okay 100 feet from, you know, a band playing, but wouldn't be okay 10 feet from that band playing. I wouldn't be okay um, 10 feet. Sometimes it's just, band. sometimes like it's just, it. a, <laughs> so, so it could be a part. distance, it could be, you know, just the number of people, you know, density of the crowd. Um, and so you just slowly get closer and closer to your end goal. Mm. Heather yeah. Travis, you crushed it. <laughs> Thanks. Heather Travis, tell us about uh, the business, where we can find you, uh, where we can uh, become customers. So our website is leadthewaycanine.com, and it's the letter K and the number nine, canine. We also have a Facebook page with that same name. Um, we're on YouTube. We're on Instagram. Um, yeah. She's we're everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> she's, she's all over the place. She is. I mean, you, you can look around and see her. I mean, this... This I had one client tell me a couple weeks yeah. ago, he's like, are you really busy or what? And I was like, why? He's like, I saw you three times this week. And I don't, he lives on a farm. He goes, I don't even go into town that much. He goes, you were at the downtown mall. You were at the park. And there was, he was like, oh, I didn't even notice him. Just, I'm everywhere. Yeah. I busy, love busy. it. <laughs> Heather Travis, lead the way canine training.com. Mm -hmm. The letter K and the number nine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to throw this to you and let's do a sizzle reel for this Harris Tolber. Um, grooming. Grooming. We were talking about how we don't want to shave dogs yeah, I just during want, summertime. Exactly. I just wanted to say just a little bit about that. We've had several people with it being so hot come in saying, oh, my dog's got, oh, three inches long hair. and He looks so hot. Can we just please shave it down to like, oh, a quarter of an inch? And, um, you know, we're happy to do what people ask. But here's the thing. So a dog has guard hairs. They also have undercoat. It's far better for us to take out the undercoat, and maybe we can trim down the guard hair a little bit, but this, it's the undercoat that blocks the circulation. And the circulation is what's keeping your dog cool. So yes, he's panning, but that's part of his circulation, but that undercoat taking out is so important. And if you take away the guard hairs, um, you've created issues like sunburn, mm -hmm. Uh, mold, allergens, uh, skin issues. I mean, you've taken away all of his natural protections. So, you know, you know if you have questions, I, I know they look hot to you, but they're really protecting themselves. And, and the other thing I want to mention is pavement. I mean, yes. If, if you can't put your hand on it for you five, know, seconds. Three, five seconds, do not walk your dog on the pavement. Yeah. They, I have seen already burns on their pads. Oh, wow. And, you know, yes, you can put salves on them, but, you know, t take your dog out early. Uh, take them to a grassy place mm -hmm. or a shady place, but just be really mindful um, of the dogs right now. And also, let's throw something in there about sneeze. leaving the... Uh, <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Oh, excuse me. Leaving the uh, dogs <laughs> in the car this time of year. Yeah. Please oh, that's, say yeah, something. Absolutely. Um, we had two people say that they were at a shopping center and uh, I will straight up call the police. I will straight up call the police too. And the store manager would not do anything or would not announce anything on the on their intercom, you know, that there was a dog in the car. That is super wrong. That's torture. I mean, over seventy degrees, it's too hot yeah. for right. your dogs in the car. Yeah. So if you they have fur coats. Right. If you see a dog in a car, call the police. They might have the air conditioning running, but you know, even then a dog can step on the air conditioning yeah. and turn it off. He can step on uh, another m moving part of the car, and, and then he's in trouble. So, you know, just be mindful. Be vigilant and keep your eyes open. And I, personally, I would rather call the police and be wrong yeah. and, and not have a dog die. 100%. So, sizzle reel that, please. But, That's a sizzle reel. Um, you filled 50 minutes. Wow. Holy smokes. See? Just like that. I guess I can talk a lot. Good job. Well, you knew that, right? <laughs> you did know that. We talk about dogs and all day. And we could day. do so much more. We might have to do this a second time. We might have to do this a second time. Great. Heather Travis and Patty Bowden. The show is What's Barking Local. It's powered by Animal Connection. For 17 plus years, you're mm -hmm. all natural pet store leader in the Commonwealth, in Central Virginia, and in Charlottesville. Um, Patty Bowden and Animal Connection, self-serve dog wash, grooming, food, mm -hmm. treats, expertise. McIntyre Plaza. Big shoes. <laughs> we try. You do. You crush it. You do a very good job. Um, Wednesdays, 3 p.m. on the I Love Seville Network. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. <laughs> All right. That was Lord. fun.
work. Easy. Thank you. Good. Yeah, Job. this was fun. Yeah, good work. Good That's work. Good. Um, Harris will send you the content. Do we have your email address? Okay. I gave it on. Yep.